Okay, something I want to make clear here is that I couldn't hold the camera far enough away, so if I was gasping for air, I apologize. I did not mean to do that. I forgot that this camera has such a good mic on it, so, uh, sorry. If you don't like it, don't watch it. How's it going, YouTube? Today in this video, I'm going to be covering my review of this John Deere 4720 compact utility tractor. So in 2004, John Deere released the 4020 series, or the 4020 series, however you like to say it. Uh, the 4X20 series, we'll just say, X being the letter replacement for whatever model indignation you have, or model you have, period. But in 2004, they released these, and in 2005, you could get them with a cab. The engine under the hood is a John Deere 50 some odd horsepower, probably 55 horsepower. John Deere four cylinder turbocharged engine. It's diesel. This tractor is equipped with a 400 CX loader, which is the self leveling variant, as given by the fact that this is all your mechanical self leveling system right here. And the CX, they offered these with X and CX variants, which the X is non adjusting on its own, and the CX has a little bit bigger. I believe a bit bigger bore on the cylinder rams here for your bucket and lift and main loader, I guess, whichever you'd like to call it. So it gives you a little bit more lift power with the CX model versus the X model. These tractors are equipped with part-time four-wheel drive, which can be engaged on the go if you choose to via this engagement lever right here, right next to the uh, operator seat. All you have to do is pull up and push down to turn off. This tractor is equipped with the e-hydro transmission, which was also released with this tractor. I believe everything else prior to this was a mechanical hydro instead of an electronic. That's why the E's there. It's electronic over hydraulic. These tractors are equipped with dual wet disc brakes. And I don't think you can see them because I think they're inside the axle transaxle or the axle housing. These tractors are equipped with a three-speed for the hydro models. Power reverser, which is the secondary transmission. You would have a clutch on this side and the brakes would be on the other side. You have a forward and reverse and neutral lever right here. And then you would have the normal CB, neutral, and A, and then a four-speed quadrant to choose from out of that. So that gives you, I think they give you 12 speeds forward and reverse which i don't think i'd ever go backwards in c4 because that would scare the living shit out of me <laughs> but that's beside the point your seat comes with a mechanical right suspension system you can adjust it the tension for your weight with this guy right here all you gotta do is flip this out and turn it i would also like to add that this is the baseline tractor model and uh, this is pretty much as simple as you can get when it comes to features if i haven't already said that i'm just going to make that clear here you can also adjust the forward and backwards positioning of it so that your legs can actually reach the pedals these tractors are equipped with a diff lock all you have to do is stomp your heel down there and pull this out a little further than that though and you will lock your diff to unlock it all you have to do is stop whatever uh, i believe if you were to engage it you'd be going forward but the point is, what you have to do is you have to go in reverse for a couple seconds and you'll hear it unlock and you should be good to go. I would not suggest taking turns with that because that is very hard on your differential to leave that locked while trying to turn. Especially trying to use the brakes, that's even worse. These tractors are equipped with a parking brake. That is on. Press the button. And that is off. Down here is your hydraulic right of adjustment for your three point and the only thing that it actually operates is your downward movement so if you get a heavy implement per se and you try to drop it it'll sit there and go down like this even even with this variable three point it is not a hydraulic outlet type three-way system it is actually variable and it does it on its own and i'll demonstrate that when the tractor is running but all that does is it controls how fast it goes down, and it has a, a valve in there. 
that allows a certain GPM to flow by as the three point goes down and the fluid goes back to the reservoir. That's how that works. This is a category one three point hitch with your factory top link and everything is here. They come with a draw bar. I don't know whether or not they give you a hitch pin for it. I don't believe they do though, however. Uh, we have lost the pin for one side of the draft arm, but that's okay. The three point is also equipped with adjusting arms here so that you can choose however wide you wish that to swing. That is off by one. I kind of figured I'd screw that up. There it goes. It's really easy to, all you gotta do is pull the pin, put it back in. If you can't tell the subframe right here, that's what half inch, three quarter inch, three quarter inch steel. That is a mount for your backhoe and early and late models have different backhoe model numbers which have different power outputs on the cylinders and so on and so forth but they still will all have this regardless and to put it on that'll be another video to show you how to do that it's fairly straightforward and it's fairly cumbersome at the same time the newer models i believe are much easier than these but i guess i'll go ahead and pop the hood for you because at this point, I'm just going to show you the rest of the tractor, and then I'm going to talk about its history. Don't mind the bird shit. This thing sits in a shed full of bird's nests, I, uh, namely barn swallows, so we don't have uh, any problems with them. So let me get this hood open. So here is under the hood, and this is your John Deere. Oh, boy, I can't remember the model. I think it's a 4024T diesel engine. They use these for generators sometimes. Uh, there's your little bitty turbocharger. To enhance the power on this old girl your block heater is right here which we've put a new cord on that if you can't tell because the last one broke um dipstick oil dipsticks there oil fill is right next to it oil filter is right here a little bit of a ramp for your oil to drain down in uh let's see what else i'm not really going to identify too many other points i'm just going to identify your servicing points <laughs> And over on this side, it comes with the fuel filter. Fuel filters right there and fuel primers right there on top of it. I think there's a water drain on the bottom of it. Yep. Uh, just to point this out, there's your hydraulic pump right here. I think that's your fuel pump. Alternator in there. But that's just a couple service points. Let's actually get up in there as if you were going to service the machine. There's your battery right down there. I think this is your hydro cooler radiator, which we need to fill the tank for your auxiliary drawing tank for extra um, coolant to be put in. Cap, overflow, screen. Clean that screen quite often. Air cleaner, air inlet, muffler. Fuel tank is back there. It's a uniform tank. It's actually really hard to see sometimes. Lights are up there. Mesh grill. And then you have a service interval chart right here inside the hood. I believe there is another side. Yep. There are oil requirements and your daily service requirements. And there's a heat shield over there for the muffler not to burn the plastic. I think it's actually fiberglass. It's actually a really solid hood. I'll talk about the tractor if I notice any other features. Oh, and before anybody asks, real quick, this is an early model. This is an 06. So it's a second year of production. And they provided you with really, really deep shells. So if you flip the wheels around to your outer position, this is how wide you're going to get. Why do we run this position? Because there are some instances where we would have rolled the tractor if they weren't out and around here it's not very hilly from the what you guys can see but back over there towards the pond is a different story so everything's dished out though as you can tell i think the i cannot remember how heavy those wheel weights are but those are wheel weights bought from deer with the entire bolt kit as well and uh, i think they're somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 pounds maybe a little more or less they're plenty enough but uh they do the job and there's 
also beet juice in the rear which i want to get rim guard for instead of beet juice but beet juice is less expensive but i'll get on to the history and what we've done to it so for all intents and purposes i'm going to leave the hood open because there's a one mechanical issue maybe two that i'll have to address um other than that i don't really have any other there to sum it up though basically this thing has never had any major failures it's always been a good tractor has always started on the first couple cranks if it's cold you plug, you plug it in unplug it after a couple hours on the block heater if not longer than that uh it, it'll start in pretty much any weather provided the hydraulic fluid is not stiffened enough to the point where it won't flow which i've had it to that point almost before uh i'm not making that mistake again but at any rate there's a couple things you guys may see right off the bat that have been done and the bucket's worse for wear but um we'll start at the front and as you can see we have installed an aftermarket tooth bar and trust me if you're going to use a loader tractor that is your go-to as you can see we have welded this hook on there yeah i didn't do that but and it's off center which is another thing that bugs me as you can see but it still works and i've used it many times it's actually very handy just make sure you line it up with that center nut though because that's the center of the tractor and if you can't tell even then there's a center line in the hood to line it up with even then so if you're going to weld it do it right don't do what we did not really much has been changed here never had to undo any hydraulic hoses replace any um this tractor has extremely sloppy pins and this has always come loose right here need to put a washer on it quite frankly um the pins if i could get a good grip on you yeah i can't show you there what about the actual arms nope there you go there's prime exact that's pretty much how all the pins are and this thing's had a hard beating for 1400 hours and it actually just rolled over 1400 putting it over here to wash it so this thing has 1400 hours on it obviously it's been residential use um but it's been a hard 1400 hours it's been through a tornado it's been through the cleanup of the tornado it's been through basically taking down barns sheds helping assist building that house or at least renovating it um it's done pretty much everything you can see it's ever since 2006 for us that's the second battery we've actually put in it since 2006 the last one shit out last year and it was the stock john deere battery which is kind of amazing because that was what 14 years of service give or take that's pretty damn good in my book for a battery that's really good actually okay let me address the mechanical issues while i'm here this thing loves to chug up your coolant extremely well. And we had an issue with it while mowing the pond dam. Pond dam. I'll put a link up over here or in the description, whichever comes first, where you can go watch that failure. Where the water pump seized up, which the water pump is right there. It's that bronze gold looking pulley right there the thermostat and the pump are all right here this is your um, hose that goes from out of the thermostat slash pump up into the bottom of the radiator and it seized up completely after let's see it was two years ago that it happened that's been reliable for for us otherwise it does leak a little bit though not very much to be noticeable but we do have to top that off every now and then and the other issue, which I'm sure every John Deere 4X 20 series owner has ever had to deal with, is these fuel issues. These things have a... We so I'm going to voice over this just to give you the right story. Uh, the fuel solenoid that turns on and off the tractor likes to stick. Sometimes you got to flick the key on and off, which that's a bit of a pain in the ass. And then the fuel filters are a big problem for these tractors, uh, this motor specifically. Hence why I said that for every 4X owner, or 4X 20 series owner, they like to get air in the system and it's never easy to But pump. these things don't really have a good fuel system in regards of user friendliness, but if you can learn it, they're pretty good otherwise. Other than that, I can't think of any other mechanical failures. 
everything's gone the way we've wanted it to, as you as you'd hope. Um, basic oil changes, air filter changes, filters in general. You know, we've done all that good stuff. We bought it from Sloan's original decal. I believe is on both sides. There's one here, one on the loader. There's one on the backhoe and the tiller that we bought with it. Now, I'll get to operator comfort and all that good stuff. Seat's a little bit cracked. Actually, it's really cracked. Um, tilt steering wheel, no telescoping, however. Come on over, come on over here on the left side of the dash. You have your instrument controls, which I'll just go ahead and start it up so you can see that. Yeah, I let it cycle. The newer ones have a quicker gauge spin up, as I like to call it. That's your miles per hour. That's if you're in the seat and that comes on. Load match. It's off. On. Off. Hour meter. And it just cycles. Back again. I guess I'll cover your gauge instrument cluster here. Over on this side, you have your fuel gauge, your PTO light, uh, engagement indicators. Now, the only one that works for us is the rear one because we do not have a mid or a front PTO. This one down here is cruise control, which this one, these are all equipped standard with your glow plug heater which you push the key in to engage and you should hold that for approximately 30 seconds maybe 45 in extremely cold weather four-wheel drive engagement if it's on turn signal tack your digital readout right side turn signal temperature gauge Alert indicator for your digital gate or digital indicator down there. Airflow sensor obstruction, battery charge level, parking brake, and oil pressure right down here. But other than that, that's fairly straightforward. As I showed, that one runs through all your um, displays on the digital readout, turn signals, which don't work when the key's off, load match which is a feature that prevents the tractor from stalling. So say you're in B, four-wheel drive, 2,000 RPM, working with loader work. You mash this pedal and it stalls out, dies, you have to restart it. You know, typical hydro when it comes to loader work. Well, what this load match does, you turn it on, and when you mash this pedal, it'll automatically adjust. It's an electronic um, computer troll. Con Sorry, I keep getting confused because of that freaking bug and i can't tell if he was going to land on me or not okay but when you throw this load match lever on or this switch it doesn't matter which direction you're going forward or reverse those are your twin touch pedals by the way uh, that's what deer calls them your twin touch patented along with the e hydro Whenever you mash this pedal, it will never stall out. And I can testify by that because I've used this many times with load match on. It never stalls out. Tilt steering uh, adjustment. There's five positions on this. Throttle. PTO on off. Warning lights or flashers. Flashers and headlights. Headlights or cab lights. And back off. Loader joystick. It's a two-way, con four-way control to... Uh, Technically, that's two sets of remotes, but the loader control, down, up, curl out, curl in. Your three-point control, which I believe this is draft control over here, which this one is not equipped with. Well, at least I don't think it is. I may be wrong in that. But all you got to do is pull this up, and it lifts the three-point as indicated there. That locks it up for transport mode. That's all the way down. There should be a little thumb screw to uh, uh, tighten that up so that you can come back down a stop wherever you choose. So say if you set it at three, you can come back down and stop there. And then to move it past that, you move it to the side and down. Um, this is cruise control right over here. You push that back this way or off. That's in the neutral position, still the same as off basically. And this doesn't lock forward though. It 
moves forward, and then when you let off, it is locked since it's electronic. Kill that spider. But what happens is you'll be, like I said, I'll demonstrate everything. Whenever you're in a forward motion and you press this and lock it, it will stay at that same miles per hour no matter if you throttle it up. If you throttle it down, of course, it's going to come down. And then to whatever speed that it it's um, maxed out at, if you throttle down and you throttle back up, it'll stay at that speed instead of whatever you set, which is kind of weird, but um, I'm not bothered by it. I have used that cruise control button quite a lot. It is quite handy. And these other three little plugs here are for if you were to have the motion match equipped on your hydro which this is pretty much the most baseline model you could get for these tractors open cab no hydro upgrades you know nothing fancy no remote outlets which i believe there would be a cutout right here for your outlet your hydraulic um two-way remote which they come out right there on the scv and sometimes they come out up here on the rops um that's dealer equipped let's see and then, of course, if you get the fancy control, this will be more of like a gaming, as I think of it, it's more of a gaming joystick. You'll have a four-way thumb pad for two remotes up front on the loader or somewhere else up, up front on the tractor if you have a cab tractor, which is pretty much the pattern I've seen. Key is down here. Push it in. Turn it this way for accessory. That's off. Turn it one more for ignition. And, of course, your starting mode. And when it's in the ignition position, you can push it in and it clicks. And that preheater light will come on so that you have the ability to preheat your engine. And we'll come back here to finish up. So you have your top blink. This is your power beyond, even though it doesn't look like it. This is your hydraulic pressure line right here, uh, down on this side actually. And then it plugs into the top for a return. And that operates the three point. What all this does and why it has a quick connect there is for your backhoe. Whenever you put it on, that ties in with the power beyond. And there's actually a hydraulic outlet under this three-point arm. It's kind of tucked away. It's hard to see. It's right there. And that is your return line for your backhoe if you have your backhoe on instead of this being the return line. What this does is it, all you got to do is push that out, hook that up to the backhoe, get your return line on your backhoe, hook that up. Then you'll have your backhoe operated, and that kills your three-point. You cannot use your three-point. Once Once you have hooked these up to your backhoe, you cannot come back and use these three-point arms. Which, um, the three-point lift arms here are part of the backhoe attachment hookup system anyways. You, don't, you can't use any of this. Not like the new tractors. Um, you more or less... You're only going to use these. This will lift. This hooks up back here on the back. On two hooks on the backhoe frame. And it picks it up. You throw your pins in. And you're good to go. That oil fills back there. Hydraulic check is down there. Pretty hard to miss unless they're faded. PTO shield lifts. Um, 540 RPM PTO. Standard on all these. I don't think you can get a thousand with these. And if you can, I'd imagine it was custom ordered. Um, draw bar, obviously, as I said before, is down there. Hazards are back here on an open station. Then you have brake lights, in quotes, even though they don't actually act as a brake light. They're just running lights. For when the headlights turn on and you're on the road, that lens is busted from the tornado. Um, there's a dent up there on the guard, which the guard is optional or standard on the loaders. I can't, loader tractors, I can't remember. But that's bent in from what we did. Uh, I think there's one more control I'm missing, which is down and over here. This is your loader joystick lock. When you throw that down all the way, that may be moving, but it won't activate your remotes at all. And then once it's unlocked, you can move it all you want. One thing I forgot to mention too is when you go in the down position, this has a float. So basically when the loader's on the ground, if you're doing any groundwork, leveling out stuff, anything of that sort the loader will just float and it will go up and down without you having to move it and it will not be rigid this fluid basically in this piston is free to flow back and forth from the reservoir to this and that hence gives you 
your floating mechanism on your loader and that's just that's just that valve sticks open basically and that's how that happens but uh that's about all i've got for this old girl i pretty much covered everything i can for what we have i think the only thing left only thing i can do now is go and show you the implements we bought with it so for the longest time this old girl was sitting outside and as you can see the decals are faded and so on so forth i'm not going to elaborate on that you guys know what happens when stuff sits outside it's not good for it um and the seal over on this side for the gearbox over here prematurely failed and this thing started leaking like a sieve so that's about the only thing that's been done to it besides gear oil change that's been sealed up um this actually has been replaced now that i think about it and has been painted the wrong color uh obviously the pin's gone legs there still the shroud for the pto is pretty screwed up but other than that this thing's fit as a fiddle this is a john deere 665 tiller i believe is it a let's see i think it's a seven foot six foot six foot tiller because i believe the seven foot is 672 and then out over here in the pile of mess which we need to clean up it's the John Deere 448 backhoe. This is the backhoe that attaches to the back of the tractor when you choose to. And as you can see, there's a couple hydraulic lines you hook up. This is your return line over here. That is your input line. Seats all sorts of screwed up from the tornado because it was in the barn over here that fell on it. So that's had a rough life, as you can see. Still is it, you're still able to sit in it though. So it's not that doesn't really matter um hookups for the this is where your three-point arms would come into you back up into it and it slides right up into there picks up the backhoe and then all you got to do is slide the pins in after you've put the hydraulic hoses together that is and voila it's hooked up ready to go um pretty basic functioning backhoe though outriggers these guys right here this is your release um for the boom lock this has a boom lock equipped on it that's actually the release right there this just picks it up if you're up there um make sure those are all three outriggers are down there they're buried as much as i hate to admit it, this old girl needs to be repainted quite frankly because this paint's not going to last long the black the black on this thing's pretty much gone the green's not in bad shape uh, I bet the pin, the pins in this thing are a different story now that I think about that. It's hard to grease this thing because it sits outside. And that's out of my jurisdiction to control. So, I'm trying to get him. <clears throat> that might actually have to be one of my projects. I might have to just pick this thing up with the deer and run it over there and set it down in there. Because this poor thing needs to uh, get put away. So, at this point, I think I'm just going to start it up and show you the basic movements of it really how everything works and then that'll be it This thing does have variable valves. As you can see, Pretty much how that works, not very hard for that one. A is the slowest for hard work, of course you have neutral. B is the one we use the most because it's middle speed, and then C is your road, road, um, road gear. 
or fast transport gear if you're running around here, which I'll throw it and see. This tractor is equipped with power steering. That's what that cylinder ram is down there. Speedometer functions. Oh, okay, I can't run very fast because my teeth spilling everywhere. All you do is push that down wherever you set your pedal at. That green light comes on and you're good to go. And then it'll stay at 0.9. We get out of the grass. It takes a little bit to compensate, but it comes back to where you set it. And then to cancel it, I either keep my foot on the pedal and press the zero, rock it back basically, and then let off. Or you can just press it off and it kills itself right then and there. Parking brake. That light comes on. There's only, there's one safety switch, I think, in this, and it's that seat, and uh, we have not bypassed it. None of these safeties have been bypassed. This is probably the best tractor we have around here, besides our antique stuff, and even then, uh, crap, more tea's been spilled. But even then, it still does its job. I'll do a quick test of load match. I don't have it on right now, it's in C. At idle. See how it almost stalls? You can turn turn that on while you're moving pretty much at any time, but that's to the floor. I'll turn it off while it's moving. You can tell it kind of kicks on. It does slow it down a little bit, but that's to save horsepower and a little bit of your fuel, too. Like, I can, I can mash it from forward to reverse, and it will not die. Turn it off. Barely makes it. So that's a pretty, I don't usually do that anyways, but that's a good example of how load match works. And you could tell when it was on, it kept those RPM, I think it kept it above 700. And when it was off, it would run like at 450 and it almost died sometimes. So there's a pretty good example of how that works. Another quick test. Oh well. And of course I thought I'd just take the loader off for demonstration purposes. Um, it's actually really easy. That is John Deere's quick touch system on pretty much every loader equipped from 2006 and up. Or 2004 technically. Or five. Roughly that era. But it's really easy to take off. This thing gets freakily easily much easier to drive. Don't know why I was trying to put a coherent sentence together and I couldn't talk. And for some reason it's quieter too, but I think that's because it has less to bounce off of because that bucket's pretty big, so that sound kind of comes back at you. But, I mean, I can go full lock on both sides, which you can't do with a loader on. 
while sitting still. And you can run around and see, which is way easier too. It's just weird. I'm not used to it. Anyways, onwards and upwards. Guess another thing I should do is show this while it's in here. 4024T at its finest. Your tag is right down in there. Like I said, everything's easy to get to. Fuel pumps right there. That's your throttle. 